So first thing we do when we're going ahead and solving, um, all I ask you guys to do is to factor this. Well, before you do any kind of factoring with sum and difference of um, two cubes or um, two cubes, is you want to make sure you can see if you can factor out a GCF. Because we notice that this is in the form of a cubed plus b cubed. And that's what we talked about last class. Do you guys agree we have something cubed and we have another number, right? Now, but you can say, well, that's not cubed because 54 is not a cubed number, right? Yes? Yeah. So we want to look at, all right, well, if it's not a cubed number, then is, can we possibly factor a number out then to make it a cubed number? And you can see that they both share a 2. So if I factor out a 2, I'm left with x cubed plus 27. Now, all my markers go. Now I have this in the form of a cubed plus b cubed. Does everybody understand? And so therefore, basically, a cubed is the same thing as x cubed. b cubed is the same thing as 27. Right? We're just adding the 2. Is everybody OK with that? So therefore, I can say all I wanted you guys to do was just factor this. So if a cubed equals x cubed and b cubed equals 27, to factor this using the, difference to, dif, or the sum of two cubes, I like to evaluate for a and b. So if a cubed equals x cubed, I want to figure out what is a. Well, to do that, I need to take the cube root of both sides. So the cube root of a cubed is just a. The cube root of x cubed is going to be it's just x. So a equals x. Now, to figure out what b is, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. And therefore, the cube root is what number multiplied by itself three times gives you 27. 3 times 3 times 3. You guys can even see it's up there. So that gives you 3. So the factored form, which was provided to you for the sum of two cubes, is a plus b times a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Right? That was the factored form. That's all I asked you guys to do, was just to figure out what a and b were and then plug them into the factored form. So therefore, we have x plus 3, I'm putting them all in parentheses, times x squared minus x times 3 plus b squared. Does everybody see how I evaluated x or a for x and evaluated um, b for 3? Does everybody see that? Questions? No. Is everybody good? So all you had to do for your homework was just simplify this. So x plus, oh, that's not b. That's supposed to be a 3, right? OK, so the simplified form would have been x plus 3 times x squared minus 3x plus 9. That's all you guys had to do for your homework. Done. That was it. That's all I asked for. Okay. However, now for your homework tonight, you guys are going to go an extra step. And it is a little bit more work. So if you guys remember, this is set equal to 0, right? So in reality, everything, this is always set equal to 0. So now I wanted you to think of now we're going to move past factoring, but actually solving. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you have the product of two factors equal to 0, then we can apply so-and-so property to solve, which we call the, yes, question, or name. Yes, absolutely, thank you. Um, however, if you remember, when you have a fact, when you have like this multiplier 2, it's not going to affect actually the zeros. So even though, yes, the 2 does come down, you can easily divide out the 2 as well. So it's not going to affect anything, OK? Because it is the product of all these. Um, so yes, you would want to bring down the 2. I didn't do that on purpose. But you can also divide it out, and it's not going to affect the answers. Um, does anybody remember what the property name is? It starts with a z. Yeah, Zero product property. Zero product property states when you have a product set equal to 0, you set each and every factor equal to 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, and x squared minus 3x plus 9 equals 0. Can we solve this one for x? Yeah, this one's easy, right? Subtract 3, subtract 3, x equals negative 3. Love that one. The next one is x squared plus 3, um, negative 3x plus 9. So I want to see, is this factorable, right? What two numbers multiply to give you 9, add to give you negative 3? Well, there's only a couple numbers that add to give you 9, right? 3 times 3 and 9 times 1. Do any of them add up to give you negative 3? 
So this is non-factorable. We cannot factor. So there's two methods we talked about in class how to do this. We could either complete the square, or we could use the quadratic formula. I am going to prefer to use the quadratic formula. So we have a quadratic set equal to 0. We know that a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is 9. Right? Quadratic formula, if you guys don't remember, is opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So in reality, for your homework tonight, if you factored everything correctly, you're really just setting both of your factors equal to 0, solving this, and then solving using the quadratic formula. So let's plug it in. x equals opposite of b, which is going to be a positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's going to be negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9. And then that's all over 2 times a, which is 1. Does everybody see what I did? OK. Then we just go ahead and simplify this. So that's 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times, um, 4 times 9 is going to be 36 all over 2. 9 times 36 is going to be? 9 times 36 is going to be a negative 27. Ooh. The what? Oh, sorry. Well, you guys didn't know 9 times 36? All right, so I'm going to complete this over here just because I'm running out of space. So we have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 over 2. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about imaginary or complex solutions, right? So we want to make sure that we can simplify the square root of negative 27. Well, just remember, square root of negative 27, we can rewrite that as 9 times 3 times negative 1. Because 27 is not a square number, but we want to figure out which square numbers can we rewrite with that. And the reason why we want to do this is we're simplifying it. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of negative 1 is i times the square root of 3. Does everybody agree with me that that is equivalent to that? We want to practice simplifying our radicals. So therefore, this is x equals 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 all over 2. So your solutions are here and here. Now, how many total solutions do I have? Quick, how many total solutions do I have? How many are here? Two. Two. How many are here? One. How many is that total? Three. Based on the degree of this polynomial, how many am I supposed to have? What's the degree of this polynomial? Three. So if the degree is three, right, that tells you there's three solutions. Does everybody agree? Yes? However, here's kind of a little tricky question. How many x-intercepts do I have? Gosh, my ass is. How many x-intercepts do I have? One. one. Why is only one? There's three solutions. Because only the real solutions represent the x-intercepts, right? You can't graph complex numbers. Well, you can, but we're not going to be learning that. Um, you can't graph them on the real number axis. You have to have an imaginary axis. So therefore, there's only there's two complex solutions. So we know that if it, master, it covers the number of solutions, but there's only one real solution. So that means there's only one x-intercept, OK? And that's what you guys do. You could also write these out, just so you guys know. You could also write this as 3 halves plus 3 halves i squared of 3, and x equals 3 halves minus 3 halves i squared of 3. If you guys wanted to break those down, I don't know how you guys might see that on a test, but that's another, another way to write those. Does that make sense? I just spent 10